Well, once again, good morning. For those that are just joining us online, welcome to Cross Country. Hey, stand with us if, as you, if you will, please. And come on, let's worship the Lord today. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line now. Well, Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line now. All right, time. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line now. Well, if you want salvation, tell him what you want. If you want salvation, tell him what you want. If you want salvation, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line now. Come on, let's sing it together. Well, Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Jesus on the main line now. Well, Jesus on the main line now. Jesus on the main line now. All right, here we go. Gone at last, gone at last. Oh, my sins, they are gone at last. I've had long. Drinking that bad, bad love, but my sins, they are gone and less. Well, gone and less, gone and less. For oh, my sins, they are gone and less. I've had a long, stricken that bad, bad love, but my sins, they are gone and less. Stringing that bad, bad love, but my sins, they are gone at last. Well, gone at last, gone at last. Oh, my sins, they are gone at last. I've had a long, stringing that bad, bad love, but my sins, they are gone at last. I've had a long, stringing that bad, bad love. Oh, but my they are gone Oh, if that's you, give Jesus a hand clap this morning. We know a man who can take our sins because he shed his precious blood. Do you believe that this morning? I don't know too many things. I know a whole lot of people, but I only know one man who can redeem a life. Save a soul and turn it all around. I can 
hearts this morning. you love him. Just begin to tell him how much you need him. your voice. 
voice. I just declare breakthrough over every person in this house as you begin to worship him. And online this morning, we declare breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's sing it. Well, I sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord, praises to your name. For your name is great and greatly to be praised. Oh, I sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord, praises to your name. Oh, Praise God. Everybody stand with me, if you will, please. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for letting us see you this morning. Thank you, Lord, for being here in this place. Lord, we give you praise. We enter your gates this morning with thanksgiving and with praise, and we honor you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we're trusting you, Lord, again, to touch every life, break every chain, destroy every yoke of bondage this morning. Lord, we're believing you, Lord, to minister health and healing and wholeness. Let every single disease, let every infirmity be broken today in the name of Jesus. Let every struggle be resolved. Lord, let every torment of mind, Lord, be loose today. Father, let us hear your pure, sweet word. Let us receive of you and you alone this morning. And for all that you have and are and will do, we'll give you all the praise and the honor and the glory. In Jesus' wonderful, wonderful name, and everyone said a good amen. 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 God bless you. Yes, give the Lord a big hand clap. Thank you guys so very, very much. Thank you, Lord. You can be seated. Praise the Lord. Uh, We are, uh, uh, we'll be praying for the needs of people at the end of the service. And um, I know a couple of you that are are planning on that, and we're just going to trust and believe that God uh, that the Lord will meet every every need in your life today. Uh, if you've got your Bibles with you, somebody kick the lights on so everybody can see. Um, uh, just just one of them will be fine. Uh, hopefully, you've got your Bibles with you today. If you've got your Bible or your iPhone or something this morning, will you wave it at me this morning? Well, praise the Lord. Some of you need to just work on that. I'll encourage you to do that. <laughs> uh, um, uh, a, 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 there's a, a series of messages called Armed and Dangerous about the, the Word of God in the, in the mouth of, of a believer, the danger that that person is uh, to the enemy. Uh, there's also an a, 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 a opposite side of that, uh, the unarmed and dangerous, and it's the believer running around without the Word. Somebody say amen to that. They're about as dangerous as the other, just to themselves. But Anyway, uh, <clears throat> I talked to you a couple of weeks ago, uh, last week actually, uh, about winning the battle uh, of the mind, this, this struggle that everybody goes through, this conflict uh, that actually will be lifelong. And uh, I'm going to, over the, the, the next few weeks, uh, scattered along, I told you that you needed to arm yourself, you need to build an arsenal of Scripture so that no matter what you're going through, what you're facing, what you're <clears throat> uh, exercising faith for, uh, you will have Scripture, you will have something from the living Word of God to deal with that with. And I'm going to try, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, to help you build that arsenal of faith in your life. 
And this morning, we're going to start with prayer. It's a place that we need to, but you'll begin to gather some of these things today. We've, swapped, we've switched up the bulletin also just a little bit. Anybody got one handy here? Um, uh, and I encourage you to, to make use of it. It's a, a place for you to make notes on the back, uh, and you may do that in your, uh, if, if you're one of the young folks in church, uh, like Brother Nichols, and use your phone, <laughs> make notes in your phone, whatever. But anyway, just I encourage you to gather some of this stuff, hang on to it, <clears throat> and uh, I believe it'll be a blessing to you this morning. If you've got your Bibles with you, turn with me to Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13, and uh, we're going <clears> to <throat> we're gonna look quickly at the prayer that Jesus taught, and beginning with... Uh, uh, Matthew 6, verses, verse 9, it says, In this manner, therefore pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed, <clears throat> hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. We're going to kind of work through that, but I want to talk to you about a couple of things about building this pattern of prayer into your life. Continually, Jesus himself, as our model, he withdrew from people. As, as, we, as we have talked about prayer over the last couple of years, we've talked about three things, find a place, find a time, and find a pattern. Uh, Jesus, in his pattern, in the way that he did things, if we use him as a model, uh, was continually pulling himself aside from his daily <clears throat> activities, the demands of ministry, all the things that's going on around him. He took time aside from everybody else to be with the Father and pray. That pro the priority of Jesus' private and alone time is everywhere in the Gospels. It's how he began his, his ministry. It's how he made important decisions. It's how he dealt with emotions just like anybody else, like grief. It's how he taught his disciples. It's how he prepared for the great ministry events that took place in his life. It's, it's how he prepared for death on the cross. And you ask yourself, and you have to ask yourself, how could we think if Jesus needed to do that, if it was critical and crucial for him to build that kind of lifestyle, for him he didn't have to build it, it was, but for us, looking at him to build that, that kind of commitment and priority in our, lives, in our lives, if it was necessary for him to do that, how could we ever think that we could live well or love well without following his example? <clears throat> well, I can tell you that you can't. And for most people, this will be the greatest struggle in your life. The mind is a battlefield, and, and I talked to you about that, about the greatest battlefield, but this may indeed also, along with that, be the greatest struggle of your life to develop the time and the, the priority, the discipline in your life to find and dedicate yourself to certain times, either, either morning, evening, whatever it is, but something, a pattern in your life to pull aside and spend some time with the Lord. Look at some examples from Scripture. In Mark 1, 16, it says, Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, and he said, come, follow me. One of the things that was a part of Jesus' life was that he was always pulling aside out into, out into nature, away from everything and away from everyone. Mark 1.35, very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up and left the house and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. <clears throat> One of the things that impressed me and has for, for years, I'll never forget it, is the, the lifestyle that, that Joanna had developed in her own life even as a 17, 18-year-old. She had graduated from high school early, went on to Bible school, 
and on her own, no, no one's help, no vehicle, none of those kind of things that you would consider an absolute necessity if you're going to have a place to live, have a school to go to, and have a place to work. But one of the things that she had committed herself to is to pray for the nations of the world, that the earth should be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. And there was a group of students there from the school that would gather in a prayer room at five o'clock in the morning before anything, anyone else was up, anything else was going on and spend at least one hour on their knees crying out to the Lord, not for themselves, not for their own needs, not for their own particular things that were going on, but just one thing. Lord, fill the earth with the knowledge of your glory. Lord, touch the nations of the world. Let no one, let no one enter eternity without hearing at least one time a presentation of the gospel and having a chance to to come to know you, how incredible that was to me. And, And yet, and let... And yet when you think about it, unless you get to that place where you can pray for the needs of others even more than you pray for yourself, it's going to be hard for you to experience the really, really great things. It seems like there is a a breaking, a crossover, a tip-over point in people's lives when even though they, it's not that you may not face all the things that other people are facing anymore, but I, I'm an absolute firm believer that God's word is true and everything that he says is true. And when he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all the things that you have need of will simply be added unto you and in your mind and in your thoughts, that's contrary to reason. As our makeup is, and, and, and as incredible as God has made us as people, A brilliant mind, so many people do. Thinkers, imaginative, strength, energy. Uh, All these ideas, all these things that we we think we can take care of ourselves. And for many people, for much of their life, they can. And and people are just, as God's creation, are, are remarkable. And we see God make such, such precious things out of people's lives. But even, even in the best, there's, there's, there's a place and a point, even if you can take care of yourself for most of your life, there's a place that we cross over in the spirit. There's a place that we cross over in our relationship with the Lord and our, our one-on-one, day-on-day relationship with him, that when we go past our own needs and our minds and our hearts and our lives begin to be turned around and focused on him than they are me on his desires and his wants and his, his wishes, his pleasure than our own, on the needs of others, on what other people are going through. It seems like there's a tip over point there where, where we walk into a realm that maybe we've never been before and it's not, not spiritual, it's not spooky or anything like that or, or, or weird or anything. It's just an, it's just a change of heart that comes in us that literally turns into something that we could not be without that. And, and part of our growing and part of our prayer life and part of our growing in this area and winning the battles of life, not only in our mind, but in everything that's going on in our life is getting to that, praying through that, worshiping through that to that point where you are and then God's word begins to follow along beside you. Now that you're sinking my kingdom above everything else and you're praying my kingdom into the earth, I can, I can do in you and for you and through you more than I could have ever, ever done before because now you're just trusting everything in your life to me and you're working on what I want. That was his pattern. That was who Jesus was. That's who he's making of us. As we enter in this season of a call to prayer and fasting, we have to look at Jesus' life and say, I want to be like you. I, I I want to model my life after you. In Luke 5, 15 and 16, it says, however, the report went round concerning him all the more and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. So he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. Not everyone can do the same thing. I have had to go to what some would consider extreme 
links even in my own life to get into this place with the Lord so that I can trust him the way I need to, that I can give to him the way that I, I need to. There have been times in my own life, I went one year, I spent fasting every, every third, third day. Uh, that's a third of the year, about three months of fasting over the year, four months of fasting, every third day, every third day, every third day, every third day. I went a full year without ever touching anything but the Bible. I never read a newspaper. I never watched the TV. I never exposed myself to one single thing other than his word. And it was something I needed. I don't know what the Lord will call you to do. There's no, there's, there's no set, there's no instruction booklet as far as that's concerned about you fast this much or you pray this much or you pray at this time of the morning. But the important thing is that you're listening to the Lord and you're allowing him to lead you into those places that you need that are tailored and, and fit for you so that you can be in that place where you trust him and depend on him and everything that goes on in your life. Jesus himself withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. I'm grateful that the Lord is a, uh, was a country boy. Uh, I, I just, I, I've thought about this, but I just imagine, and, and I love, uh, I, I'm as, although I don't have anything on me right now, uh, I'm, as, I'm as electronic as anybody. Uh, I have electronic everything. I live on my phone, and, and I, I've got two iPads. I've got, I've got, I'm always got my laptop with me, and I'm very, very dependent upon all those things. But I have never found anything in the electronic, digital, modern world that can reveal to me as much about Jesus as happens when I'm out in the field with my hay and the cows and the horses and the trees and the birds and the air and all that kind of stuff. I'm glad Jesus was just like that, aren't you? I believe that he was, if he was walking the earth today, he'd do, be doing the same thing. And part of that is kind of tongue-in-cheek, but also a part of that, as I'm telling you, it's part, of, it's part of who we are as a church. Uh, it's part of what the Lord told us to do about hanging on to that when the world is rushing headlong into fast here and hurry there. And I'm, I, I, I confess to you, I am as bad as anybody. Uh, my middle name is Hurry Up. It's A.K. Hurry Up Robinette. Uh, that's, that's me. Uh, quick move, this, that, and other. And I, uh, I'm high D. I'm, I'm driven uh, a, as much as anybody that, that you'll ever see. I've always been that way. My mom's sitting back there, and she'll tell you for 64 years, I, 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 I was born that way. Uh, I was, mom tell me, was I running, could I run at six months old? Yeah, at seven months old, I, I was already running. I had a, she said I had a permanent pump knot on my forehead because <clears throat> I was just, I, I didn't go anywhere slow from the beginning, from the time I learned to walk, I was running everywhere as I've been told and I trust her. How many of you trust my mom? And I was just the right height to hit that forehead on any, anything that was in the room. I hit it on every, evidently every table that was around. And uh, did the doctor tell you that, that I was finally just, the doctor told mom that I was just probably going to have a permanent pump knot right here in the middle of my forehead. Uh, the Lord told us to go uh, back to the country. Uh, and he told us that we needed to build a church uh, that would hang on to our history. It would hang on to culture. Cowboy culture just kind of sums all that up. Uh, say what you mean, mean what you say. Hard work, integrity, all that kind of stuff. And pull people, not only for people that are into the, in, in the country, it, er, into outside stuff, but help, help pull other people 
back into that, expose them to a time outside their rush along world and their apartments and their townhouses and all that kind of stuff and and all that is perfectly fine and some people never have a choice some people have never even been exposed to anything different from that but that we as a church is part of our loving the Lord and serving him that we do that not in an arrogant prideful way but we do it in such a way that we provide something for the rest of the world that may have never known that. When you look at our, uh, the drawings of our, our campus, our place where cross country will, will, will be out here on Bear Creek Road, uh, it, it is about all of that. Uh, all, of, all that you see there is there intentionally. And it's, again, not just a playground for us, but it gives us a chance for a kid that's never even been on a farm, never been on anything like a farm, never been around a horse, never been around a goat. Anybody in the room love goats? I think they're the funniest things that's ever been. But um, um, that, that in that, uh, we get to tell people about Jesus. Jesus, his, his pattern was to pull away, to get outside. And I don't... I don't think that's unspecific. I think he deliberately would today. He'd get outside. He'd get away. I don't mean just, just to be in the field or the park or something, but to pull away from all the, the tug and pull on his life. That's what he was doing. And for you and I, I don't care where, where you live, whether it's in New York City or Timbuktu, uh, there is a need in your life if you're going to pray through into his presence, if you're going to touch heaven, if you're going to provide time and quiet to give the Lord an opportunity to speak to you, I believe that probably most people aren't following the perfect will of God for their life because they haven't heard what that perfect will is. And a lot of people haven't heard what that perfect will is, not because he's not speaking, but but because we haven't given him enough time in our lives quietly and give him the opportunity to talk to us. Come on, somebody needs to say amen to that because it's absolute truth. And and I'm, I'm the world's worst. Um, and I see that even in my own life. When I'm realizing that, the, that the, the Lord is having to get my attention by something in the natural so that I'll stop long enough for him to tell me something that he wants to tell me, I know I've gotten myself too busy. <clears throat> what we want is... Brother Nichols, can I hold your phone just for a moment? Sure. What we want is the Lord to be like this on the other end of a phone. <clears throat> and we want him to answer. Any of you ever, ever get aggravated when somebody doesn't answer your phone or doesn't return a call or doesn't answer a text or doesn't answer the text right now? You know, really, most of us now has gotten to the point that we feel like each of us ought to be on call Every moment of every hour of every day, no matter when it is, right? So if I text you, Steve Justice, I mean for you to text me right back. And if you don't, there's something wrong. What's wrong with you? Am I important? We go through all this, all this stuff. And, and here's what happens. And it can, it can happen in anything. If we're not careful and, and we're not spending enough time in the Word and in prayer, we let the culture and the thinking and the rationale of the world that we live in begin to creep into our Christian life, even when it's something as simple as this. And we begin to think, Lord, you, you need to do this because I've, I've, got, I've got five minutes, 300 seconds, and that's all I've got to give you today. So you better speak and speak quick because I need a word from you. And am I telling the truth? Yeah. Um, in the old days, um, the common phrase was in a lot of things concerning prayers about praying through. Am I telling the truth, Brother Nick? Praying through. Uh, praying until you hear. Uh, praying until you got a word. 
uh, spending time at an altar, which is very difficult for us to hear, have. Uh, we've got, you know, a little while. Uh, we pay by the hour. We've got a little while to be in here and be out. And uh, you, uh, a lot of you do, maybe most of you do, but I, I just, I was in someone's church the other day and I just thought, oh, Lord, how wonderful it would be just to have a building. <laughs> Uh, can we just set a tent up out there? <clears throat> David, can you, just, can you just build us a... David Crutcher, where are you? Wave at me. Can you just build us a parking lot out there and we can put up a tent? I spent a lot of years under the tent and we'll put a portable air conditioner on there so we can just have a place. Um, when you have church as long as we want to, not, that's not a threat. It'll still try to stay 90 minutes, but... Uh, <clears throat> If we want to have an altar and we want to get an altar, altar just a time even in church to pray and hear from the Lord, we can. Um, it's the only way to do it. I don't care. I don't care if they plant an iPhone in a filling in your tooth so that you don't even have to carry anything anymore. I don't care if they plant some kind of electronics in the pupil of your eye so you don't even have to have anything that puts up one of these holographic screens. You'll never, ever, there's never going to be a technology, no matter how long we live, that'll take the place of prayer and of time and of aloneness and of listening because with our makeup because of who we are and what we are it takes time yes, it, it takes time great <clears throat> one of the best horse trainers I know is a guy over in uh, Dixon his name's Kenny Bashirs. And people really get aggravated at Kenny <clears throat> Bashir's performance horses. Um, they get aggravated a lot of times because they want to know how, how many months will it take you to get this horse uh, ready to compete. And, you know, they've got to be legged up. They, they've got to have a good handle put on them. They, you've got to be able to ride them off your legs. You've got to be able to do all this stuff. They've got to be able to do it. They've got to be able to be quiet. They've got to be able to stand still and handle their own emotions. They've got to be able to trust you. There's just a lot, a lot of stuff that goes on in training a really, really, really good horse, especially a roping horse. And he'll just, he always tells them the same thing. I can't tell you that. It's all up to the horse. I can't tell you how fast he'll learn. I can't tell you how fast he'll do that. I'll take you as far as I can, as fast as I can, but I can't take him past what he's created to do, what's, in his, what's between his ears, what's going on inside him. That'll be up to him. And we're the same way. It takes, it takes time. It takes time to build spiritual giants. It takes time to build people that walk hand in hand with God. Him working in you, <clears throat> him developing you and, and cleaning out all the cobwebs of your heart and of your mind and your thoughts and, and all this kind of stuff and getting you into the place that, that, that you can weather anything. We're, God, you see, the Lord is not trying to get us into the place <clears throat> where we live in a trouble-free world on this side of heaven. What he's trying to build in us is a people, a people that can weather any kind of storm in this kind of life. That can walk through the valley of the shadow of death and fear no evil. Amen. That can sit at a table prepared for us in the, right in the very presence of our enemies and sit there and eat and enjoy and feast. That's, that's the test. And if you've lived very long, you'll know that that's the truth because I don't care who you are, how big you are, even in the spiritual world, how big a giant you are, how big a church somebody pastor, how many, any of those kind of things, they'll go through the storms of life just like you and I. 
In Mark 2, 23, one Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields and his disciples walked along. What was he doing? He was praying and pouring into those around him. Mark 3, 7, Jesus withdrew with his disciples to the lake and a large crowd from Galilee followed. See there, you fishermen, you lake people, there you go. That's where Jesus hung out, was at the lake. Somebody say good amen. I thought you'd jump on that. Um, Luke 6, 12, and 13, Jesus went out to a mountain, a mountainside to pray, spent the night praying to God, and when morning came, he called his disciples to him. He, went, he prayed all night because he was Jesus? No, because it just becomes necessary sometime that you pray and pray for some time. Matthew 13, 1 through 3, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it. While well, all the people stood on the shore and he told them many things. He, he went out. Uh, Matthew 14, 13, Jesus heard that John the Baptist had been beheaded. He withdrew by a boat privately to a solitary place. Mark 6, 31 and 32, because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat. Jesus said to his disciples, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. And they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. Matthew 14, 23, Jesus had dismissed the crowds. He went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. And when the evening came, he was still there alone. Mark 9, 2, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. Following the example of Jesus, you find a place you find a time, and then for us, because we need it, <clears throat> you develop a plan and develop a pattern, and that's what I'm going to get into. Find a place, find a time, and next, develop a plan. I'm going to get into the first point of this, and I'll finish the rest of it over the next week or two, but one of the things that Jesus, that is necessary for us to make sure that we get through and we're touching on and we're dealing with things in our life and things that are important to the Lord every day is that we develop some, some kind of plan and pattern in our life. Yes, we need time. Yes, we need a place. Yes, we need to get away. Yes, we need to dedicate, organize, commit, make it a priority in our life. But then having done that so that you're just not there daydreaming and your mind is wandering all over the place then you need to build something in your life if you're going to get to this and pray this through that will help you, help you, structure you, help you get to all the things that you need to. It's one of the reasons that we have the tabernacle, the old tabernacle. The tabernacle was a representation, and I'm not going to deal with that <clears throat> this month, but we'll come back and do that sometime. We talk about the gates and entering into that place. It was all a description. It was all to reveal to us what it would be like and what it should be like coming into the presence of the Lord. You walked into the gates of the old tabernacle. You came to the brazen altar. It talked about the blood. You went past that to the, the, the laver of water, which is, which is about cleansing and ongoing cleansing. You went out of that outer court into the inner court, into the, into the holy place. And in, in that place, there were, there were uh, other instruments of his glory, his praise. And you got to that altar of incense, showbread, Incense, and you those were worshipped. Then you walk on into the, into the holy of holies, where the 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 tangible presence of the Lord was. He gave us a pattern, and it's important for us to get those down. We're going to use the Lord's prayer today, but again, Jesus said, "Pray, pray like this." Let me give you a plan. <clears throat> let me give you a, let me give you a pattern to pray by, so that when you do like I did you pull aside. When you do have a place to pull aside to, <clears throat> excuse me, here's what you do. So number one, number one is you're building this arsenal in your life of developing a pattern to pray with or to pray through or to guide you in your time that you're alone in that place to talk to the Lord. Number one, make him first. It's real simple. 
Jesus said, when you pray, pray like this, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. The very first thing that he did is to honor the Father God and make him and put him first and preeminent over everything that's going on. Acknowledge him as your first priority. Praise him for who he is. The psalmist wrote, in Psalms 34, 1 through 3, he said, I will bless the Lord at all times. How many of you know <coughs> he had, <coughs> excuse me, he had, uh, he had discovered something important. He had discovered something that was absolute and necessary. It was something going on inside him, but it was something necessary to him. And he says, I will <coughs> bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. So not only for a, a time with the Lord, but also as a condition, if you will, a spiritual discipline in your own life, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to develop a praise attitude, a worship and thanksgiving attitude in my life. So like the psalmist David, I will be found here. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. You know, I found out that when I can't pray anything else and I can't figure any, anything else out and nothing else is going on the way, it, nothing's going on in my life the way it ought to, there's one thing that I can always do and that's praise him. I can honor him and I can worship him. Lord, I just thank you. Lord, I just praise you. Lord, I just honor you and give you the praise you deserve. It says, my soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The hum humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, <clears throat> and let us exalt his name together. The Bible says that we are created for his good pleasure. Part of our prayer time has to be that entrance into his presence, that entrance into his time of blessing him. Revelation 4.11, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will... They exist and were created. If you've got a King James Bible, it says that, and for your pleasure, they exist and were created. Do you know that the greatest purpose for your life, the greatest and number one reason that you were created is for his pleasure? For him. And I think most likely too few people ever spend any real time in any given day just simply blessing the Lord. Just doing nothing but blessing him. The one thing that we can do is develop this and build this into our lives so as, as we live a life of prayer, we need to talk to him. We, we need to come to him. But I, I know who he is, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start that. I'm going to begin that. My, my entrance into that time, my beginning into that time, is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bless the Lord because it's why I was created. I, I can only imagine the change that could take place in any life, the the elevation <clears throat> that would take in, in our lives, the, the lifting up, the strengthening in, in us as we kind of lay everything else that's going on around us aside to, to come boldly and, and rightly and properly into his presence by, by blessing him. Let me ask you this. Is there anyone in your own life that you would make an effort to please before yourself? Can you think of anyone? Do you realize that the Lord wants to have even preeminence over that? But maybe it'll help you understand what kind of attitude and what kind of heart that you need to have in order to do that. I'll do things. My life is geared. My, my life is bound by covenant and by love and by care and concern uh, to please Joanna even over myself. Particularly if there's a choice. But whether there is or not, 
to do things that please her. I try to wear the right shirt. <laughs> no. And I think about how much of my life is involved in that, wrapped up in that. It's really pretty amazing. Making a living, what I do with my time, and yeah, my dress. I'm not going to. Not that I would, but I'm not going to do anything that's um, going to dishonor her or displease her. Now, sometimes uh, she's sitting back there scared because she don't know what I'm going to say. <clears throat> <laughs> at the end of the day there's really nothing in my life uh, that would be worth making her unhappy with me So, so Lord, can you, can you, uh, can you help me become that kind of person where you're concerned? Can you help me get to the place where I'm like that with you, that you have that kind of place in my life? that I'd never, there's, there would never be a time <clears throat> that I would do anything in my life without thinking about that. Come on, are you with me right now? Do you have somebody in your life like that? <clears throat> there's never a thing that you would do if they're that important to you, that you wouldn't consider that, consider their feelings, consider <clears throat> what they would think, consider... What, what that would do, how that would impact their life. So, Lord, can you do that? Can you do that in us? If we're going to learn to pray, <clears throat> the model that Jesus gave us was to come before you, and first and foremost, Jesus said, pray like this. The very first thing we do is come before you and say, Our Father, which is in heaven, Lord, hallowed be your name. Praise and bless who you are. Lord, can you do something in me that would put you in that place in my life so that there's nothing that, <clears throat> that I will ever do. There's nothing, there's never going to be a time that in a decision I make or a place that I go or something that I think or something that I plan that's ever going to be without considering you first. Is it pleasing to you? Are you happy with me? Will it bring you pleasure? <clears throat> it pleases, <clears throat> excuse me, it pleases me to please her. It pleases me. It pleasures me to bring pleasure to her. It honors me to honor her. It's a joy in my life. I think of things to do. Maybe not as often as I ought to. But flowers, candy. Oh, how women love to get cards. Talk.
Father, is it, is it possible for you to do that in me? And Lord, what could my life possibly be like if my life every day was filled with how can I please you today? How can I please you? Because I know not only would that bring joy in my life, but he won't just ignore that. He won't just hold within himself. The Bible says that the, the eyes of the Lord look to and fro throughout the earth, looking for those on whose behalf he can show himself strong. As surely as I want to show myself strong for her, that I can take care of my family, be the priest of my home, and all those kind of things. I want to do that for him, and I know that he's, he's looking down on me, and he's not ignoring my efforts or my heart to please him. You see, you see, just in one, in one place you can see that in Scripture, I guess better than any other. The reason that King David was so great in the eyes of the Lord and the Lord honored him so much is not because he was mistake-free. It's because he had a heart for the Lord. It, it pleased him above everything else to honor God. As we begin this month of prayer and the things that we're praying for in our lives, could we build this first and foremost in our lives as Jesus pattern? We're going to learn, Lord, and allow you to do whatever you need to do in our lives to help us become like that. I want to live a life that pleases the Lord. I want to be a I want him to look at me not only, not only when I get into heaven, I want him to be able to look at my life right now and say, you bless me. I, I, want, I want him to, 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 to look at the devil just like he did when he talked about Job. And he said, have you considered my servant Job? I, I want him to speak out across the heavenlies and say, hey, have you considered my servant? A.K., have you considered my servant, have you have look at you? You bless me. Could we pray this month? Could we pray over these next few weeks? Specifically, Lord, would you do that in me? Would you do that in me? We're running late, <clears throat> just a little late, but will you take us back? The last two courses you did, the first one. Yeah. I want to ask you to stand with me this morning and I want you to just tuck yourself in with the Lord for a moment and we're not going to worry about who's singing, who's not singing, who's doing what we're going to pray for the needs of the people but, and I'm going to ask you to come in just a moment but right now, very first thing if you don't know the words, they'll be up on the screen can we just, for just a, a minute or two really worship the Lord Whisper it under your breath if you need to. Do it in us today, O oh Lord. All the glory of the risen Lord. I want to be part of that, declaring Who His glory. Can and this what this is what we say about you, Lord. With the beauty of Nothing the can Lord. compare with your beauty. Forever he will be. Yes. The lamb upon the throne. I gladly bow my knees. Yes, Lord. And worship. You alone, I will proclaim. Hallelujah! The glory of the risen oh, yes. Lord, who once was slain to reconcile. Oh, just think about how wonderful he is. For 
forever you will be. The Lamb upon the throne, I gladly bow my knee and worship you. Come on, worship Him this morning. We worship You, Lord. All oh, heaven declare. If you're here this morning and you need prayer, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and make your way up. We're going to pray and believe God for you today. And who can compare? Steve, come on up. Let us pray for you, brother. With the beauty of Barney. Forever he will be the lamb upon the throne. Come on, guys. Some of you come help me pray. I gladly bow my knees. The worship, rest of you worship like crazy. Come on, lift him and up. And worship you, Lord. Yes, Lord, we worship you. We worship you, Lord. Come on. I will. The glory of the risen Lord And who once was slain To reconcile man to God Forever you will be The Lamb upon And 
Come on, sing it with me just one last time. The glory of the risen Lord. And who can compare with the beauty of the Lord? Lord, you're working us. Forever he will be. Yes, Lord, forever you will be. The Lamb, Lamb upon the throne. I gladly bow my knee and worship Him alone. Now, just softly, just play softly. Now, if everybody in this place watching online, if you bow your heads and close your eyes, just one, one more thing before we go today. The most important thing. For many people here in this place watching online is that you make sure that you have committed your life to Jesus. You've invited him, invited him into your life to become the Lord of your life and allow him to begin that work. For some, it will be the first time. For others, it will be a recommitment, something that you may have started at some point, but you're realizing today it's not where it needs to be. And while every head's bowed and every eye's closed, it's between you and the Lord. I want to give you an opportunity. I want to pray with you. If you'd like to pray that kind of prayer so we'll know who we're praying with, would you just as an act of faith and saying, yeah, that's me, would you just stick your hand up toward heaven and say, yeah, yeah, I want to do that. Those of you watching online, everybody in this place, pray this prayer aloud with me and say, dear Father God, I come to you today knowing I need a Savior knowing I need Jesus. So right now this morning, I say, dear Jesus, come live in me. Let me live in you. Be the Lord of my life, now and forever, in your holy name. Now, Father, I thank you and I praise you for every person that prayed that prayer, <coughs> that your word is true, that if we believe in our heart and confess with our mouth that you are Lord, then we would be saved. Thank you for doing that in their lives, Lord. Do that work in them. Lead them and guide them from this place and cause them to be everything that you created them to be in your wonderful, in your holy name. In Jesus' name, everyone said a good, good amen. Oh, I just pray the Lord has done some wonderful things in your life today. For those of you that have committed your life to the Lord, uh, you need to be baptized. We'll do our next one just right after Easter. It's important that you do that. You need to get a Bible. You need to download one on your phone or something. You need to start reading the Word, beginning John. If you don't know where, you'll find it in there. If you don't know, it's there. And, and get in church, whether it's here or somewhere else or with a group of people. You need to be a part of the family of God. And certainly that will be something that the Lord will do with you and in you. I hope that the Lord touched your life today in a powerful way. And I know that He'll continue. We're going to build a pattern in our life. We're going to find a place. We're going to find a time. And we're going to begin to pray like never before and see God open the heavens over us. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face to shine on you and give you peace and grace everywhere in your life. Let no weapon formed against you prosper. Let nothing designed to hurt you find fulfillment in your life whatsoever. May the Lord give his angels charge over you to keep you and bear you up in their very own hands, lest you even dash your foot against a stone. May the Lord supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Be blessed in the country. Be blessed in the city. Be blessed coming in. Be blessed going out. Be the head and not the tail. And only and always be above and never be beneath in Jesus' name. If you can say a good amen to that, do it. God bless you. Have a great week. We'll see you next Sunday. You're dismissed. Be blessed.
He went out one day, made an altar out of a star.